question number one. What sport was the first to have a women's team? Does anybody have an idea? Basketball. Any sport? Basketball. Track? Basketball. Track? Basketball. Basketball. Basketball is correct. In 1902, basketball was the first sport. Make sure that you're marking which ones you get right so we can give out the prizes. Was the first student to pay tuition at FHSU a male or a female? Male. 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 Oh, Any more guesses? Yeah. Female, correct. <laughs> Jeannie like Ward was the first um, student to pay tuition. <laughs> Question three. How many buildings on campus are named after women? Three. Three? Who said four? Yes. You're correct. Oh. There is four buildings. We have Custer, Stroop, <laughs> McMinus and Agnew. Agnew is actually tore down now, but it's replaced with a new building and is still named after Agnew. So question number four. In what year was the first African American female student elected homecoming queen? 1970s. 1970. And her name was Stella Howard. <laughs> question number five. The first female VP at Fort Hayes State University started in 2008. And we were told, it was Dr. Tisa Mason, and we were told that she did not know that she was the first woman to have any kind of leadership role at Fort Hayes, and that she found out during a meeting, and she got so worked up about it because it's such a huge responsibility and everything that she had to leave the meeting. and then. Conduct yourself and come back. And then question number six. In what year did the first female president of Fort Hayes State University start her career? 2014. 2014. 2014, and it was Dr. Mary DeMartin. Okay, so with honesty, how many people got six of all of them correct? Six questions. Okay, how about five? Okay, so we're going to start off by talking about early FHSU, FHSU women here on campus. Catherine O'Loughlin McCarthy, she graduated from Fort Hayes State Kansas Normal School in 1917. There is five different names for Fort Hayes State, and this was the second name, so you might, it still means Fort Hayes State University, so you might just see different names as we are going through the presentation. She's actually from outside of Hayes. And she was the first woman and first woman lawyer to serve in Congress in 1933. And then O'Loughlin Elementary School, that's on Hall Street, is named after Catherine O'Loughlin McCarthy. And then Susan Calvert, she graduated from Fort Hayes, Fort Hayes, Kansas State College in 1941. And then just one year after she graduated, she was one of 25 women appointed by the U.S. Navy to attend the Naval School to be a Naval instructor. And that is such a big deal because uh, most women back in the day did not have that leadership role. And then Elizabeth Jane Agnew, which was the Agnew building that um, was torn down that you saw the picture of, that is who it's named after. And in June of 1910, Agnew founded and chaired the first home economics department and she received a degree in science and economics but she received it through um, Kansas State University and then she was the first Dean of Women does anybody does everybody know what the first Dean of Women means no okay well like today we have all colleges of deans and so like back in the day it was divided up between men and women so she was the first Dean of Women in her time and then one of the first women at Fort Hayes for whom a college building was named after, which was a dormitory, uh, it was still a dorm at Residence Hall like it is today, but it was for just women. But like I said, it was, it was built in 1957 and then it was torn down. Then of course it's rebuilt, but it's still named after her. And then, yeah. 
So next we have Geneva Herdon. Um, she graduated with a English and home economics degree. Um, she founded the communications disorder program here at Fort Hayes. Um, it was called Fort Hayes Kansas State College at the time. Um, she, in 1950, she taught the first course in speech, speech pathology, excuse me. And then in 1954, um, the first student completed that degree. And then, um, in, as a living memorial, there has been a scholarship established um, for speech pathology majors in her honor. The next woman is Clara Malloy. Um, she actually attended um, Bethany <coughs> Conservatory at the time um, in Lindsburg, and she graduated and was certified in violin and voice lessons. And then she and her husband founded the um, Fort Hay State University Music Department, which she chaired. Um, she also instructed violin students at Hayes and in Hayes for 54 years, which is a really long time. Um, and then she was associated with Fort Hayes for over 40 years. And this is just a picture of her by the piano. And then this is was in the newspaper when she um, passed away. All of these women up here are the first ladies of Fort Hayes. Um, <coughs> president Martin is the ninth president of Fort Hayes. So these women were all married to the eight presidents before her. Um, and as you can see, there's Pick and Lewis, Rarick, Rooster, Cunningham, Gustad, Tamanic, and Hammond. And most of our res uh, sorry, academic buildings are named after um, the past presidents of the university. So now we're going to talk about the, our present women here on campus. We do want to point out that there's a, many amazing women here on campus that's creating change and making history, but we do not have time to talk about all of them, of course, so we have just chosen a couple of them, so that's what we're going to talk about. Of course, uh, Dr. Martin, who is the ninth president here at Fort Hayes, she was the first female president um, of Fort Hayes State University. And when it was founded in 1902, and then whenever she was uh, elected as president, um, that equals up to be 112 years. So that's a really long time, and that was why it was such a big deal that we actually had a female president here on campus, too, um, as our leadership role. And she has, she's very um, educated, and she has so many, um, She's just so empowering to everybody on campus, and we, did, of course, can't talk about all of her um, accomplishments that she's made in her lifetime. So we've just kind of talked about some re awards that she has won over her time, and the Presidential Volunteer, Volunteer Service Award, and she received this award from the President of the United States. Um, and then she was a finalist for the Innovation and Education Educa um, Edi Educator of the Year <coughs> Award, and then she was one of the most influential women in Chesterfield County, Virginia. So, and these are some female department chairs that we have here on campus. There's over 30, 30 departments and we have now 12. So as you can tell, we're still getting up to be equal in the leadership role here on campus. Um, Jill, she is the department chair of leadership. And then we have um, Kim Perez is the history chair department here on campus. Um, Melissa Wilbur, she is the informatics chair department here. And then Emily Bright, she is a accounting and finance chair here on de department. And I'm just kind of choosing some that are kind of eye-opening that, that a woman's holding these um, chair positions. And then we have Loretta Dorn, and she is the chemistry chair department here on campus. And then Corey Voth, and she is the art and design chair department. So and, um, a specific woman that we are pinpointing is Dr. Keegan Nichols. She is the Assistant Vice President of Student Affairs and also the Title IX Coordinator here on campus. Um, she has a Bachelor's in Special Education, a Master's in College Administration, and she's a Doctor of Education um, in, with a concentration in adult and um, higher education. Um, she has received several awards throughout her life. Um, just recently, she received the NACA 2016 Frank Harris Outstanding SGA Advisor Award, which is really awesome. Um, she's also won several different NASPA awards, including the Region 4 West Campus-Based Literature and Research Award last year in 2015, 
as well as the 2014 NASPA Grant Assessment Colleague Team Project. Um, she is an inspiration to many and when asked to describe Keegan, an FHSU um, graduate student just said she is amazing. So this lovely woman, Dr. Kristen Tardif, um, is, her story is pretty interesting and um, we actually learned a lot about her and it was awesome. <clears throat> she started out as a virtual student um, and she received a geology degree and then she came back to uh, Fort Hayes in 2012 to get a master's degree and actually moved from Maine where she um, started her virtual career at Fort Hayes <coughs> and moved to Hayes for a year to hold a GA position in the leadership um, department and now she teaches leadership studies at the University of Arkansas. Um, her interesting connection to Fort Hayes is that her grandmother, Molly um, Wallerson, was the director of the social building which is now the Memorial Union in 1920 which is really an awesome deal because back in the 1920s and early 1900s it wasn't known for a woman to have such a large role on a campus. Um, her grandmother received a degree in English here at Fort Hayes and she loved helping others whenever she could. Um, up here this little clip um, talks about how she connected so much with the students and um, it says during the years that she um, served as the social building um, advisor, she found a place in everyone's heart that she met with and kind of became a counselor for all the students and um, held a special place in her heart as well as they um, held a special place in their heart for her. So after all of this cool information that we've given you, we kind of have a call to action. Um, um, Amber White in Diversity Affairs holds um, the Phenomenal Woman Project, which is basically nominating a woman who is breaking gender stereotypes, taking action, leading by example, and, and or has made outstanding contributions to our campus. Um, this, is, this will be the third year that Phenomenal Woman will be on campus. Um, in 2014 and 2015, there were several women that were nominated. Um, some uh, instructors and faculty include Dr. Leanne Brown, Dr. Chrissy Brangart, um, Carol Soko Olaf, Dr. Beth Walliser, um, Dr. Keegan Nichols, Pam Driscoll, just to name a few. And then there's also been students that have been recognized, such as Sadie London Spurlock, um, Holly Wise, Brenna Johnson. Um, all of these women do different things on campus and have a wide impact on campus, um, which is really awesome. So in order to nominate a woman, we you can go to tigerlink.com, or I'm sorry, tigerlink.fhsu.edu, and then you sign in with your username and password that you would for on Blackboard. And then right when you open it, on the left-hand side it says Phenomenal Women, and you just click on that link and there's going to be a form, and you just fill out that form and submit it. So, this is due on Sunday, March 13th, so as soon as possible in order to nominate a woman who's inspired you on campus would be awesome. Amber, do you want to say anything about that? So you can nominate an undergraduate, a graduate student, a faculty or a staff member that identifies as a woman. Um, it's a really simplistic form. You just have to know what their name is. You don't have to know their GPA. I'll look it up um, just in case you have to have a 2.8 GPA or if you're nominated by your peers. And like just 200 words as to why that person is awesome meeting some of those criteria. Do we have any questions any, about anything? Any of the women? Nothing? <laughs> we do want to say a special thank you to Sherry and Patty for coming to our Time Talk, of course, and also providing us some pictures and some information of women in the early stages. So thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy schedule to do that for us. Would you girls want to say anything about any of any women up here on Four Days that inspired you or that you look up to or any questions for us? Well, we have a, our library dean, Deb Ludwig. She's the first woman to be the director of the dean, the main dean of the Four Days Library. So she's pretty inspirational. <laughs> of course. Thank you all for coming today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Um.